Hey everybody, I'm going to split this into two separate videos. First one being this one where I'm going to go over the potentiometer of the repeater itself. The second video will be about delays and how to program the ATtiny85. So these repeaters here classify as a linear potentiometer. This means that by moving the peg, you change the voltage value on the output. A commercial example would be volume sliders such as this one. Right here are the 3D printed models. I use copper foil tape to make contacts, which the middle part slides across and connects these paths here. In order to make sure it's making a good contact, I have a little spring printed here, which just slides on. So right here are three 220 ohm resistors. So input voltage comes from this line and onto this section here. If it closes this section, with this pad, it will read the voltage here and send it out through this pad here. Nothing is divided in this pad until it goes through this resistor. And so now it'll be two thirds of the input voltage. Once it goes through this resistor, it'll be one third of the input voltage. Finally, when this pad is connected, it will read a voltage of zero since this pad's gonna be connected down to ground. When soldering, make sure you go quick or else it'll melt the plastic on the bottom. For getting the leads to come out the bottom, it's a little tough since sometimes the prints close the holes. The best thing to do is grab the heating iron and slowly melt a strip of wire through the plastic. Once it pokes through, you can freely move it and bend it onto the other pad. Once you have it bent in, you can just solder it onto the pad itself. Make sure it's flush by melting it into the plastic. You have to be careful not to get overspill onto the pad or else it won't be able to make contact here. If solder happens to spill over, you can either use a wick to clean off that solder. The pad will be tinned, but it'll still be able to make the connection here. If you don't have any wick to clean the solder up with, then you'll have to rip the pad out and put a new one. Make sure that these pads are completely flush with each other. When putting the LED, the longest will be to the left and the shortest to the right. Bend the leads, put it through until the leads show. Once through, bend the shortest lead all the way to the right as much as possible. Once you have the two other leads poked through, you can bend them out away from each other. Right here, I'm connecting a 300 ohm resistor from the negative lead of the LED down to the ground pad here. After connecting the resistor, I connected the negative of the body to the negative lead here. At this point, your circuit is complete and you can test it out by assembling it all together. Now you can cut the leads on the bottom, but I recommend leaving them pretty long in order to make sure that they're aligned grab some headers. Based on how well you align these pins in the top part of the modular box will determine how easy it is to put the top repeater on. Right here, it's not too difficult, but it does need some improvement. It needs a lot of wiggling around in order to get it right, but it will still go in. After you feel comfortable with the alignment, you can trim the leads down in order for them to go all the way through the headers. If the alignment has bent the pins too much, then just grab the headers again and fit each one, making sure that it goes flush. So once connected, you can send power and test out the circuit, making sure that each delay works. In order to add the LED to the middle part, you'll have the negative lead on the left and the positive lead on the right. And just like before, you'll bend. Next, grab some wire. Make sure that it's flexible wire and not a single core wire. It's not as flexible as stranded wire. Be really careful when finally melting these wires on since it might move the bottom pins. In the video, you're able to see that one of the repeaters is brighter than the other. This is because I accidentally used different value resistors. 
So on this side it's 220 and this side is 300 ohms. You can see this one's that bright. And switching over to this side, you can see it's a bit brighter. This side one more time, not as bright. At first I thought I was just using some LEDs that were worn down. Which can happen if a LED is going bad, it will just start dimming over time. In order to avoid that problem, test the LED before implementing it in the circuit. The current limiting resistor I recommend for these LEDs is to put at least a 300 ohm resistor. Even with the 300 ohm resistor, 50 milliamps is still able to pass through the pin. And 50 milliamps is a lot of current for one pin to handle, but it'll still function. Another thing to consider is that when you're making these rows of resistors, the value doesn't matter as long as you keep them consistent. So that means you can't have a 1000 ohm resistor here and a 500 ohm resistor here. They all have to be the same value. The voltage divider is linear, which means as long as all three are the same value, then you will get out the same division. Finally, when putting these LEDs in the towers, you risk the chance of them crossing. If the leads do happen to cross, then it'll allow the voltage just to go straight to ground and it won't allow the LEDs to light up. Since it'll no longer have a negative potential here, it'll have positive potential on both sides of the leads. In order to avoid the problem, just wrap both leads around with electric tape and I'll ensure that even if they do cross, they won't allow current to pass through each other. Copper foil tape can be pretty finicky, so even if you have it aligned just right, it still might not make contact until you press down on it. In order to add more pressure, I recommend just adding more foil tape on the middle that'll allow more pressure to be put on those pads, allowing for better contact. Once the wires are in place and everything moves freely, you can finally paint everything. I'm just using my finger in order to spread the paint around. It's a lot easier to get an even coat. Finally, the tops are just the same redstone torch tops. After that, it's all done.